fantastic. Cool, people should be able to hear me well enough. go through all of this in my usual fancy fancy way. As I have to go through this nonsense anyway to start getting back into streaming, so it'll be a good time. Okay, let me just quickly make sure that my stream is in fact actually live. quiet but I'm all right okay if I just go ahead and do that people should be able to hear me a little bit better now I'm nice and loud okay I uh, don't imagine I'll be doing much in the way of listening to music since I'm just gonna do the full set review okay let me get some water and then we'll be good to go At worst, I do the full set review for my own, uh, not nefarious purposes, but at least I'll know the full set so I can uh, prep for Thursday, which is when the set first gets released. Since I haven't done streaming in a while, I'm not one of those people who has gotten access on life day, which is fine. A okay. <clears throat> Three, hmm, go. Okay, so I am going to be doing a full Theros Beyond Death limited set review. This is from a, uh, from my perspective, obviously, I have, I could just like list credentials and whatnot about why you should listen to me, but to be completely honest, just take this as any, another data point of advice. Strongly recommend listening to Lord of Limited, Lords of Limited, and the Limited Resources podcasts. They typically do a pretty decent job. I have not listened to either one of those, so I could do this with my own perspective. So you should use this as another data point from someone who I call myself not a limited expert, but definitely limited is my strong suit. Uh, I have looked at all the cards, so I've made sure to... Uh, keep myself informed about power toughness, breakpoints, mana cost breakpoints, themes, etc. So we should have some uh, decent methodology about why particular cards are good or bad at any given point. Okay, uh, for reference, my, like, my thoughts on this set is that this set is incredibly powerful and it's really easy to get a very powerful deck in draft and in sealed. Uh, draft easier, of course, because you get to build around it. But this is a set where it's going to be very swingy, not just in the rares and the mythics, which can be really powerful, but in terms of the, the commons, uncommons as well, where you can have just like a lot of really insane effects, lots of very powerful rates. This is not a, a format where you can, I think, dirtle around and grind and slowly eke out small advantages and win that way because there's so many haymakers going on. Okay, so let's begin. 
uh, Alseed of Life's Bounty is a 1-mana 1-1 lifelink, but you can sack it to essentially give a creature enchantment God's Willing. Now, uh, the fact that... So God's Willing was very powerful as just an effect. Uh, the fact that this is an onboard trick means it's a little bit less... Uh, less powerful in that sense but has tacking it onto a 1-1 like link body is m more than uh relevant i think this is a pretty decent card to slip into your white decks and you'll be a-okay arc on a falling star six mana four four flyer so the rate on that is okay it's a little bit expensive but you like to pay five mana for your four four flyers and when it dies you return enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield now there are 42 enchantment creatures in this set not including uh external products which is a non-trivial amount right like that's uh if there's 250 cards in the set that take out the basic lands almost 16 percent of creatures are enchantment creatures and then that's not including just regular enchantments so the value on this is there um i think it's okay like i, I think it's a card that you're gonna enjoy having a one-up copy in your top end and then the the remainder text will be incidental and good enough so I imagine playing one of these. But as I said, you're gonna see, you're gonna hear that a lot from these. That these cards are all like pretty strong, just on rate. So trying to figure out which cards are better on rate is a little bit difficult. So you've got to really plan for synergy or plan to fit a good curve. And then there's cards like this where there's Archons of Sun's Grace, which is just bonkers. Four mana, three four, flying life link. Takes this have flight life link and constellation. Get a two two. Cards busted banana broken not broken but it's incredibly powerful it's a bomb rare for limited snap it up play it's great uh we have banishing light which is uh o-ring esque effect it's back um it's there's a lot of enchantment removal it doesn't matter the card's still one of the better uncommons in the set it demands them to have an answer and yes there are plenty of answers so just i don't need to explain this <clears throat> Uh, Birth of uh, Melodus is our first saga. So it tutors a planes, puts in your hand, creates a wall, and gains two life. Very defensive card. The question is, would you pay two mana for an 0-4 wall that gained you two life and drew you a planes? Maybe. Like, the fact is, you have to wait next turn for the wall. Um, so I, I personally would not see myself playing much of this just because it's a lot of work the the drawing of planes is fine gain two life is fine like this it's just not a lot of oomph for what it is so i personally with how strong this set is i would not play this card unless i desperately need to uh captivating unicorn five and a four four below rate constellation uh tap a creature it's not unreasonable we've seen this sort of effect in, say, Dominaria, where every time you played a historic card, you tapped a creature. Being able to remove uh, one blocker can be relevant. The body's not terrible. The thing is, because this costs five instead of, say, two or three, like these sort of effects have caused in the past on smaller bodies, uh, you're going to be lower on resources when you get around to playing this. So you may end up with one or two constellation triggers to begin with um and then you have to just draw into the rest so it's not uh, unreasonable i personally don't imagine me playing a lot of captivating unicorn but i can see it fitting in, a, in some decks if you just need a good for for a five minute for a five minute card it's fine um i personally am not a fan of auras like commanding presence so plus two plus two first strike and it deals combat damage to a player create a token um this doesn't feel like knight's valor so knight's valor was five mana plus two plus two and you get a two two vigilance whereas here like yes plus two plus two first strike does incentivize people to not be or to, like they, they, it's hard for them to get good blocks from it but the reward for connecting is just a one one human soldier i personally don't see myself playing a lot of this which just reinforces the fact that there are a lot of enchantments in this set, and this is this is one of them. So, uh, Dawn Evangel, three mana two three. Whenever a creature dies, if an aura you controlled was attached to it, 
return target creature card with CMC two or less from your graveyard to your hand. Now, the wording on, so this effect happens in both white and black a little bit, where if an aura you controlled was attached to it. So you have to look for the auras that work with it, and then you have to get CMC two. Like there's a lot of hoops to jump through, and it's a three mana two three, so you know, better if it was a three two, it's not great. You'll find that there are a lot of bears in this format, so there are a large number of two mana two twos. Um, so the two three, four three does trump the two twos in the sense that it it will offer a profitable block against most of the two drops in this format. But once you get to three mana, uh, three mana two threes tend to get out scaled. There's a lot of three, ma three mana three power creatures, so it's not an amazing blocker. And there's a lot of hoops to jump through. And a lot of the creature cards with CMC two or less are not that impactful. So all in all, I think it's a lot of hoops to jump through for not a lot of gain. And I personally don't think it's that good. I think it's fine, like it's playable. You're gonna put this in your curve if you need a three mana creature, but don't go out of your way to like build around this card. Um, it's possible there's some combo in there, so let's keep our eyes out for it, but regardless. Uh, Dax, blessed by the sun. So min two mana two two, that whenever another creature ETBs or dies, you gain one life. It is creature you control, so it's not quite Blood Artist-esque. Um, basically, if you play any other white creature, this is ahead of rate of the two mana two two, and it'll probably get you five to six life, so it's a fine, it's a fine two drop, increases your devotion. You know, it's not spectacular, but you're happy. Yeah, I mean, I would play this in, in most, most white decks. Next we have Daybreak Chimera. So five mana three three flyer. So that is currently below rate. It used to be a five mana three three flyer with some upside. It was pretty reasonable. And the upside in this one is that it costs X less to cast where X is your devotion to white. So if you get this as a four mana three three flyer, you're probably okay. And if you're able to make it either, either a two or three mana uh, flyer, you're ahead of the curve. So I imagine this card is gonna be pretty reasonable. Uh, it is sort of right on par when it comes to flying power toughness, as that's roughly the amount of, uh, or the size you want for your for your flyers in this world. You'll see why. Um, Dreadful Apathy is our passivism effect of the format. So three mana, passivism, but you can also play two and a white and exile the creature. So this is a way to put a stop on a small creature or sorry, a, a stop on a creature that you just want to be able to not be able to attack or block, and if it has some ability or whatever, you can um, get, deal with it another way. So I think this is like probably one of the better white commons of the set. Um, glad this card exists. Note that because it exiles the enchanted creature, it's a way to get rid of un, not unearth, but uh, uh, the what is it? Escape. That's the word. <laughs> so. Uh, Idol of Destruction, 2 minutes, 2 one first strike, loyalty ability. So that second text is pretty irrelevant. So for 2 minutes, 2 one first strike is fine. Not spectacular, you know. Don't go out of your way to play this, but it, it fits the curve. It does trump most 2 drops, because most 2 drops are 2 minutes, 2 twos. So having first strike does mean you get to get in once and have a decent blocker for those. Elspeth Conquers Death, so five mana, and it does a lot of things. So first we'll start with Exile, a permanent with CMC three or greater. That's great. Um, so for five mana, it uh, hits anything very strong, like anything that's CMC three or greater basically hits anything that's relevant and limited, so super strong. Non-creature spells cost two more to cast until your next turn. That's not huge, huge. I, I, I imagine it's going to be um, disruptive to certain players, so it's fine. So basically you're playing this for one and then for three, which is return target creature or planeswalker from your graveyard to the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter or loyalty. Right, so it's a rise from grave plus a counter plus exile of permanent uh, opponent controls. I think all that bundled together makes it a pretty solid limited rare, great and sealed, 
fact that exiles instead of um, destroys means it hits all the gods too. So very good card. I don't need to talk much about Elspeth Sun's Nemesis. It's bonkers. Slam it. I, I'm just not going to say anymore. Uh, we're, we're here to get insight into the remainder of the limited format, not busted planeswalkers for a limited. Like, I think the card is actually quite good in cube, etc. Next, we have Favorite of Iroas. So it's a 3 mana 2 2, so below rate. That constellation gets double strike. I don't imagine that I personally would be playing a lot of this card, though. If you slap a, a powerful aura on it, so you go turn three, favorite of our Royce, turn four, basically any enchantment that gives it plus power, you have a really powerful attack going in. Uh, there is a lot of removal, so keep that in mind. Um, but I, I I don't think favorite of our Royce is particularly great. You can find, in say like a red-white aggro deck sort of thing, that there's room for this card, but it's not going to be spectacular, spectacular. Uh, we have Flicker, which is one in a white, exile a creature enchantment, and return it. Um, I think for one in a white, the effect is probably overcosted right now. Um, it does right protect your things. It bounces off auras, so so it's not irrelevant. But I wouldn't start my sealed pool or my. Uh, or or my or in general, I wouldn't start my my deck building process thinking about flicker of fate. I would have to try and find synergies or whatnot. So remember, you can flicker your own auras to attach them to other creatures. So it's like a pretty powerful combat trick in that respect. Uh, triggers constellation, obviously, if you target an enchantment. Um, but it's not it's not fantastic. If it was just white, I think it'd be very strong. For one in a white, I think it's. You know, appropriately costed for a common, but not going to be format defining. Uh, Glory Bearers is fine. It's four mana, three, four. So that is a stat line you're going to see a fair amount for four mana, three, fours, or in that range. So keep keep an eye out. Um, whenever it attacks, it has plus one, plus one. Not a super powerful effect. It's not meant to be a powerful effect. Um, you'll play it if you need the slot. Uh, Heliod's Banana Bananas. It's not. We don't need to talk about Heal Heliod Sun Crowd. Um, Heliod's intervention is very strong because specifically the destroy X target enchantments and or artifacts can be a, a two or three for one for four mana, four or five mana, which is really good. I the the target player gains twice X life is not um, the worst, right? We've seen these sort of control decks in. I believe it was Exelon Block, where it played Sanguine Sacrament, I believe the card was called, where you could where you could gain double X life, um, and just like outgrind, but and then you'd have to shuffle in the deck. So so it's possible that this is the sort of dirtily finisher, dirtily gain a bunch of life, make yourself unkillable sort of thing that might exist. But in actuality I imagine two white white uh destroy two enchantments most likely is not unplayable. I don't think it's a bomb rare, but I think it'd be very strong, and in certain matchups, it's just insane. So keep read it as like destroy one creature and one random enchantment. It's probably a bomb. Um, Heliod's Pilgrim is so it's reprinted. Obviously, it was pretty strong in Theros. It's a very undercosted body, but being able to search for an aura card is really quite good, especially in white. Seeing as the premier white common, remember, is Dreadful Apathy, which is an aura. So tutoring for a pacifism effect. Three mana, one, two, draw a pacifism. Card I would play. Nailed it. Oh my god. Okay, so Heliod's Punishment, right? So this is a card that I see people playing. Or these people, people, like, are talking about it. And the fact is, it is one in a white, can't attack or block, loses abilities, and then for four turns, they don't get to use. So you have to make the most out of four turns of a pause, basically. Um, so it's a card that will find room in a load of the ground aggro deck because if you pacify the like they they go on turn three or turn four they play huge creature you go 
punishment to drop attack. Right. The 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 time so you, you get to push some damage on the early turns, right? But if you're against anything that's slow, there's the the black red sacrifice deck, which we're gonna talk about later, that can just get value out of their creature. So it's not it's not a true removal spell, right? And this sort of effect, I personally don't think it's gonna be that great in just like generic white, a slower white deck or a mid range deck. It's great if you're in an aggro deck. So you can pick this up. Um, here are the prizes. So here's here's what I was talking about. Two mana two twos exist, and they all have basically some amount of upside. The upside here is heroic creatures get plus one plus one. Um, there's a lot less in the combat trick department than there is, was in original Theros because heroic is not a true effect that's back. So uh, you'll be triggered this far less. The effect isn't that powerful. You'll play this if you need a two drop. If you're a low to the ground white aggro deck, this is you know probably a good filler common for that slot. Hero of the Winds, same sort of thing, but the fact it's a four mana one four flyer. The four toughness is quite big. A lot of the flyers in this format are three power, um, and so slapping an aura on this can be pretty good. But it's still quite slow. I wouldn't start my decks having this unless I have a bunch of ways to either trigger it. Or give it one one aura and then you're fine. Um, I do like Tutor is the card that I would play if I opened Heliod, obviously. Um, but in general, three mana to tutor for an enchantment is going to be really slow. Uh, it's probably better in sealed than it is in draft. Um, but the the fact is that it is very slow. You can't exactly play. This is not a card you play on turn three. Um, it's a card you play if you have a, a bananas enchantment and you don't want to play otherwise. So Indomitable Will is a very interesting combat trick where one in a white flash gets plus one plus two. Um this is a card you'll play if you are I think in the white aggro deck. I think this is gonna be one of the relevant cards that triggers the heroic effect. Plus one plus two is a pretty decent stat line to survive any combat, so it's a decent combat trick with the effect that sticks around. Um, we saw back in Ravnica the Flash plus one plus three enchantment. If you cast on your main phase, gave lifelink. Um, that card at Uncommon was really good, and I think this is the same sort of effect where it gives you just enough toughness to survive combat. So this is like playable. There's a lot of words that say playable. Care much is blessing. Very good. This is a combat trick you should play around at your pre-release and in draft and whenever. So it's our white plus two plus two effect, um, but also if it's enchanted or enchantment, it gets hexproof and indestructible. So God's willing esque. This effect. I mean, it's stronger than God's willing that it gives plus two plus two. It's plus two plus two with some upside. We've seen the sort of effect before. I think it's quite good. I'll probably play a copy in basically every white deck. Uh, more if I have more enchantment creatures or enchantments, but very, very powerful. Um, Storyteller is decent, right? So again, we see four mana, three, four. That's our stat line for four mana, right? So you see two mana, two twos, four mana, three, fours. Ding, ding, ding. Those are our sign posts. Um, this essentially gains you three life and puts an enchantment on top of your library. It gets better as the game progresses. The life gain, incidentally, is pretty good. It keeps you alive long enough to, to get it. It doesn't draw you the card right away. And you have to have already had a really good enchantment go to the graveyard in some way, shape, or form. I think it's fine. It's not spectacular. Um, the Lean of the Lost Pride is the card for the white aggro deck. Is that 2 mana 3 1. The Exile effect will be marginally relevant against the escape deck, but it's not fantastic. Uh, I don't like Nick's Born Courser, right? So it's a three mana, two, four. The four toughness means, sure, it'll block basically a lot of things up until four mana, but this set is so strong that a three mana, two, four is just not gonna cut it. Just like I think Omen of the Sun, uh, I think most of the omens are pretty decent. I think the black one is quite good. Uh, I think the red one's great. Like 
I think a lot of them are really strong, but I think Omen of the Sun is quite weak. Three mana for two one ones, and you gain two life. With they all have three mana sack scry two. Um, I think that this costing three mana just prices it out of the format. By the time you get to three mana, two one ones are super irrelevant. Um, I I see the pieces exist for a white ish go white deck, right? Tokens or so. Um, but there's so few heroic payoffs, they all get plus one plus so. So if you're in that deck, yes, you, you want to play this card. It's not great. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think there's better ways to go wide than with Omen of the Sun. Uh, so Pay Light Tactics is one of the cards you do want if you go wide, right? So a creature you control gets plus two plus one, and each other creature gets plus one plus one. So this is your, uh, your Anthem effect for the turn right your charge or whatever not spectacular but it's a card you want to pick up if you're if you're in that deck um so look for those pieces if they exist in draft you're almost assuredly not gonna play uh hey toby good to see you so i don't imagine phalanx tactics is gonna be spectacular though it is a card you should definitely play around if you're like oh i'll trade off two twos they make a sort of skeptical attack, right? This this could be a card that can blow you out. So let's just keep that one in mind. Um, I am not a fan of Pious Wayfarer. It's a one mana one two, so it gets outscaled by all the two twos, the two mana two twos that are in this format. And sure, Constellation and Tart Creature is plus one plus one. The effect is super weak, um, as you would expect for a one mana creature, but it's just not a card that I expect to be playing at all, even in the white aggro decks. I think you could do better. So Reverend Hoplite is a callback-esque to, was it Cabria Evangel? No. It was one of the Evangels, where it was six mana for a 1-2, so it was four white-white with the same effect, create a 1-1 one, one, equal to devotion to white. So when it came into play, you'd get a six mana 1-2 and at minimum two 1-1s, one, um, unless they killed it with the trigger of the stack, but we'll throw that out, right? Um, knocking off one mana from it, and knocked off one token from it still doesn't make this card great uh i thought the effect before wasn't spectacular and the effect here isn't great either it only i think lodges or finds its niche role in the white go wide token deck and i don't think that there's enough pieces for it to truly thrive hey max thanks for stopping by okay so revoke existence is back um now we're gonna get to the point where there's a green revoke existence which is like strictly better in every sense of the word it's an instant it hits artifact enchantment or card in a graveyard it's like what were they thinking um i am like borderline i'm so close to saying main deck revoke existence right so i i, I ran into math right so in both mirrodin and Scars of Mirrodin, you would main deck Shatter. Um, which the rate or the ratio of artifacts to non artifacts in those sets, for Mirrodin it was bonkers, so we're gonna throw that one aside. But for Scars of Mirrodin, it was something like, uh, I, I wanna say it was like 35% were legal targets for Shatter, something along those lines, a little bit less, right? Um, so in this set, there are 42 enchantment creatures and that's not counting regular enchantments so this does hit gods so out of the sideboard this can be if you're in white this is an extra card to bring in against the gods um but it's like four, 42 out of 200 let's say 240 ish right so you're pretty close to the one in six cards in the set are enchantment creatures there's approximately 85 regular so 85 so there, there's like 40 ish enchantments regular enchantments so uh almost a third of the set is enchantments so it's like so close i would i would main deck one copy of this in sealed because a lot of the enchantment creatures are really are, are, are a little bit pushed so i would main deck this in sealed okay that's my my quote-unquote hot take but i imagine that at that revoke existence is main deck I said it. Not for the artifact clause, for reference. 
Um, I wouldn't play Rumbling Sentry. So 5 mana 3, 6. We saw that 4 mana 3, 4 is the cutoff rate for 4, right? So 4 mana 3, 4. All this does is it blocks the creatures that are bigger, but doesn't push through it. So if you need a 5 drop, I'm certain you can do better than Rumbling Sentry. Um, I, Sentinel's Eyes is one of those cards that is so innocuous. So one mana, plus one, plus one Vigilance. Okay. Escape for white and exile two, two cards. It does not have instant speed when you escape, remember? So you're still limited by timing restrictions. Um, but the effect is so cheap, it might be okay. I don't think so, but it might be. It's called covering your bases, kids. Um, Shadow of the Sky is your, your Wrath. If your opponent's playing white, this is your cutoff point. Four mana. Four mana, destroy all creatures. Okay. Is there drafts for this going on right now? Well, I'm jealous that I'm not... Oh, yeah, the at GP Austin, right? Yeah. Cool, so you can you can call me out on this. Um, anyway, so Shadow of the Sky. Uh, one of the things I like to do in formats is learn all the Wraths. Here's your white wrath, four mana at the cutoff, which is which is quite cheap. Like it's it's a it's a powerful effect for four, even if they like each player with power four or greater draws a card off types. It's four mana destroy all creatures. They draw a card. Cool, still would do it. You can play you can play your own wrath very powerfully. Um, Sun main Pegasus. So here we start to see the flying. Why I was saying flying with three power is quite relevant. So four mana, two three flyer. Vigilance Life Link is not an irrelevant effect, but this needs to get a little bit bigger to be able to push through the other common flyers. So, uh, it's fine, it's playable, you know, but the thing is the fact that it has three toughness and two power means it's not going to be able to push through a lot of creatures that are in the air. I'm not even going to try to say Terranika, but I did. Uh, three mana, three, three, so above rate, very good. And then Vigilance when it attacks, untap another creature. It creatures becomes a four-four and indestructible. So it turns a, a creature to a four-four free attacker. Um, I did say four mana three-four is the is the cutoff. So you'll be hard pressed to attack too many times in a row with it. Um, but turning things into like essentially, you're giving a so untap another creature. So you're basically attacking with the other. That's fine. I mean, eh, it's okay. It's 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 at rate for power toughness. It's not gonna attack a bunch. Uh, Transcendent Envoy, two mana, one two flyer with auras, cost one less. Eh, not great. You'll play it. It, it flies, right? But it's not spectacular. And then Triumphant Surge. So there is a sub theme in green red about creatures with power four or greater. I imagine this is excellent uh, in the sideboard for that. Let's look at how many white creatures had power for a greater with no enchantments. Oh, look. There's Heliod. And that's it. Oh, they're five mana, four, four. Oh, no, there's two of them. Okay. So this is like terrible against the white decks. It's pretty bad against the blue decks. It's okay against black. There's there's enough of the escape creatures in black that that's pretty that it could be okay. But uh, I would not start by main decking Triumphant Surge. Just like uh, Smite the Monstrous, right? It's a card that I think belongs in the sideboard. And then if you see the deck, it could be quite well positioned. Okay, one color down. It only took me thirty five minutes. I am above. I am ahead of ahead of where I should be. <clears throat> so in blue, Illyrios Enraptured, uh, classic uh, Greek mythology that I can't remember the name of because of course. But anyway, so it's a three mana two three. ETB's tapped. Doesn't untap if you control a reflection, but it makes a three two. So it's pseudo like, so it's a three mana three two. That when it dies, you get a two three. Is the way I think about it. If you ever get the chance to untap it, cool, you have an extra blocker. Um, the 3 mana 3-2 three, token, you can trade off pretty quickly with any, any two power creature. 
um, gets outscaled by the four mana creatures, so keep that in mind. So I think this card is like fine. The fact is it does give you a second, like it gives you two creatures, which is good for any of the black sacrifice outlets. Um, I think the card is like just fine. Like I'll play it. I'm not thrilled, but I think it's quite relevant, like quite decent. The reflection is not an enchantment, so it's just it's just two creatures. I love the design of this card. I think it's great, like design wise. Ashiok's Erasure is a four mana counter spell that when it dies gives them the card. I, I wouldn't play Ashiok's Erasure. There's enough art uh, enchantment removal in the set. Too risky, too risky, right? And it even costs more than Cancel. So I wouldn't play Ashiok's Erasure unless I'm like desperate for a counter spell. Um, Brian Giant, you need to like really lower the cost for this, right? So seven mana, five, six is close to uncastable. Five mana, five, six is where you want it to be. So that means you need to have two enchantments. I think it's doable. I don't think it's unreasonable. There are a lot of enchantments. I think you may be able to just by playing one copy if you have an enchantment heavy deck, but not much more than that. You're never casting from too much less than that. Uh, Calipi is quite good. So at worst, three mana, two, three. So right on the rate to beat all the two drops and um, start getting to the point where it tangles with most of the three, three drops. Uh, it can be even stronger, and creatures and enchantments have spells target that target cost one more. That tax effect is annoying enough that I would basically always play this card if I'm in blue. Uh, Chain of Memory is our bad befuddle. Target creature gets minus four, minus zero, oh, scry two. This card is going to get so many people the first week it's out. Um, I don't think it's particular. Like, it's not, it's no, uh, there's no befuddle. It doesn't draw the card. So Scry 2 is very close to drawing a card. Um, it 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 basically says if you if your creature is gonna bounce, you get to kill it. Which is not the worst. Um, a lot of the like pin to the earth, so tiny effect that were enchantments are so are a lot better. But this card is not the worst combat trick. I, I I've always liked this design. Um, I will play Deny the Divine a lot in Sealed. Tart, tart counter a creature or enchantment, which is a good chunk of the set, and then also exiles it so they can't come out with escape. Very good in Sealed. I like having one copy. Possibly two, depending on the deck. Idol on a Philosophy is a very slow draw engine. Uh, it does up your devotion. It does increase your enchantment count. Uh, I think seven mana to draw three cards, right? We've seen this effect happen on one mana creatures before. I believe it was eight mana to draw three with the uh, with the O three, and that's off play. If you have a very slow, dirtily deck, you can you can fit this in. Um, Alien Instructor, three mana, two two loot. Uh, okay, it's fine. Fits the, fits slot. It's behind behind rate, so you have to get value out of that draw than discard. Um, it will trade with a lot of two drop. Uh, I don't think it's spectacular, but who knows, right? It, it, it can fit your curve and you're okay. Glimpse of Freedom is the most expensive think twice I've seen. Right, so two mana draw card, cool. And then escape, two in a blue, exile five cards in your graveyard. That's a whole lot of cards in your graveyard. Lot. I don't think it's great. I played Think Twice a lot in Innistrad. I think this is just because your value doesn't come from the first activation; it comes from the second activation. The second activation, you can't just like do it on turn three, right? And like leave up the counter spell mana. You have to play this card and like wait a lot of turns. So I don't think it's that good. Ichthyomorphosis. Ichthyomorphosis. Yeah, it's great. This card is our blue removal spell. Loses all abilities, and it's an O one. Perfect. Cards probably probably the currently the best blue combat in my eyes. Let's see if it gets better. Uh, Cure best of the sea god is superb. Seven mana. I don't even have to read this. Like 
it says seven mana make an eight eight then tap all their blockers and they don't untap so you get two attacks with it right because it triggers on your main phase and they don't untap again and then it mind controls something very good so metamind prophecy is a card that people are i think i would assume they talk about so first you scry two then you choose a card name then when you cast a spell for the first time you draw two cards um and then you look at the top card of each player's library that, that's a fact you can do that um so it's a very slow divination because it's assumed that you get to set up either with your draws or with the cards in your hand to draw two. Um, fine, it's a divination. We'll see that there's a there is a divination in this set, and it's not as blue. <sighs> Memory drain is not great, but it's your four mana counter spell. Glad we don't have a three mana counter spell at common though, so fine. Leader Kraken's super good. Just slam it, be happy. So there's this like sub theme that exists. As, as long as it's not your turn, spells you cast cost one less. Or like it, it, for the first time you cast a spell on your opponent's turn. There's not a lot of. You have to really work to get some of the blue cards to like really synergize. I'm curious to see how it'll play. My intuition that it's not great, um, but we'll see. I, I, I think there might be enough to justify it. Uh, four mana, two, five. It's a great blocker. Th four, there's four mana, three, fours everywhere. So this, you know, it just lines up exactly the same, basically. Uh, Omen of the Sea, this is like the bread and butter card for the flash deck. Either two mana, scry to draw, good effect. Flash, very important, and then you get to scry two by tapping, so fits it. Okay, one with the stars. So you enchant a creature enchantment. It's per, it's a permanent, becomes an enchantment, and loses card types, but still has abilities. So is this? It is a s four mana. Aspism for creatures with no abilities. Weird. I don't know what to think about this. It seems like it's at three mana, I would slam this all the time. And at four mana, it. I don't. Maybe? Four mana Pacifism is a lot, though. I have to think about it. Protean Thaumaturge, Thermaturge. So, Constellation becomes a copy of another target creature, except it also maintains the ability. It's not unreasonable. It's fine. Okay. Now, I love my two mana giant blockers more than I should. And let me tell you, a two mana 05 flash defender. That is a defensive card, duh. But it says you're not attacking through it on the ground on turn two. You're not attacking past it on turn three. You're not attacking past it on turn four. You're almost surely not attacking past it on turn five. This thing, if you are in the blue control deck. This card is. You're, you're not winning with your two drops. But this thing, you'll never attack past. It is so hard to get through the Dirtle Turtle. Also, it has flash. I think this has flash. I think this is a premier common. What is wrong with me? Like, sure, they get attacked for free, and you always block. I think this is a premier common. What is wrong with me? <laughs> um, I don't, I don't play Sage of Mysteries. Okay, 
Sea God Scorn. So we've seen this effect before. Six mana, bounce three things. And this is creatures and or enchantments. Um, huge tempo swing. Pseudo uh, sleep, basically. Where it's just a huge, uh, powerful effect. Depends on the deck, right? So you need to make the most out of it. So you need to like bounce three things, attack. They replay one or two, and then you have to like finish off, finish them off. So, um, Shimmerwing Chimera. So four in the three two flyer. So it has the three power, which is important, but it trades with all basically everything because it has two toughness. That you can return an enchantment you control to its owner's hand. There are. Uh, Fair amount of good enchantments in blue. Um, basically, all the omens are great. I think this card is like subtly decent. I think mean, it attacks in the air quite good. And if you get value, like you're not necessarily hoping to keep triggering constellation every turn, but there's a lot of powerful enchantments that you can return. And it returns it at your upkeep, so you can just recast it right away. Shoal Kraken, it's fine, right? Like we saw the uh, Sage from uh, uh, not, we saw this, the Sage of Hours, I believe it was from Eldraine, the five mana two five that lets you loot. This does hit the cutoff value of toughness, right? So five mana three five means it'll block everything basically everything with CMC 4 or less. And the loot effect is not irrelevant. I think this is okay. I, I, I would probably play it in a lot of my blue decks, especially the dirt league ones. The loot effect gets better in the late game, right? So the fact that this costs five means you have guided your draft a little bit better. Um, Harry Potter put the, uh, or Hermione put the dog to sleep. This is a really, 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 not great card. One mana tap a creature does untap during its next untap step. Sure. And the escape effect like is appropriately costed, right? Exile exactly three cards. So the tur let's say you draw it in a late game and you have cards in your graveyard, right? You could go sleep a creature, sleep another creature, attack, right? So that could be enough tempo swing to get you there. Um, I'm, I'm I, I don't see it. I, I can see why you would play it, but I wouldn't play a lot of this card. I don't think. Unless there's a good tempo deck that exists. And it, even then, it might be okay. And I normally like these effects, too. I normally like these freeze effects. So, Starlit Mental, two mana. Flash, important, right? It's a spell that you cast during their turn. Creature gains Hexproof, and then gets plus one, plus one. The Hexproof effect is always undervalued the fact it costs two is fine um and then it gets a it's like getting plus one plus one counter of sorts but it gives you plus one devotion i think this card is like i'll play a copy i need to play with it to see how the format plays out but i think there's enough removal and targeted effects that it uh it'll be a decent play playable unsummon but also can return enchantments you need to get value from your unsummon you can't just play unsummon in the control deck because you bounce it then what right this does and it only returns creatures and opponent controls right so you can't protect your own stuff with this so i don't think it's that great and i love unsummon effects so tell you okay so stinging lion bush is the card that you need to build around if you have the the flash deck because it can essentially freeze a blocker tap a blocker a lot of the incidental enchantments have flash which is kind of nice uh, this is right at the going rate for a two power creature or a two drop creature that it had two power if the flash deck exists it's because of this card and the Naiad. Um, don't play Sweet Oblivion. We're not, we're not, not milling any type of, yes, Sweet Oblivion does itself 
give you the escape ability. So you mill yourself four, and you can just escape it right, get right away. But that's cute. That's a great play, Thassa. Thassa's intervention. Quite good. Um, a draw two. So even if you choose X is zero, it's blue, blue. No, you need to pay four mana for it. So four mana, inspiration. Yeah, that's pretty good. Four mana inspiration. And then as it scales well, and it can, can be a decent counter spell. Yeah, I played Thassa's Intervention basically all the time. Thassa's Oracle is cute with regards to its second effect. Um, at worst, it's a, it's a, what is it? The two mana one three that puts an instant or sorcery in your hand. That you put it on top of your deck. It's two. I, I don't like the, the second line. Like, you're not gonna win the game with this a lot I don't think but it's at rate so it's a playable two drop I think thirst for meaning is great there's enough enchantments that you get to pitch bad ones and very good that it's instant uh, good, card. good combo the siren effect is so good we've seen this effect before two mana flash great flying excellent and minus X minus L, so at least minus one minus L. Card's very good. Slim it. Thrix is a bomb. It's five minute four five flyer, does those sorts of busted stuff. Uh, I don't like Towering Wave Mystic. So I, I don't imagine playing it. Try and Wave Rider. Four mana three three that you gain flying. It's fine. It's playable. Not great. I don't like Vexing Gold, even though it has flash. This is like the the bad, um, the bad flash card you play. You don't necessarily want to play it just because you have the deck. This is the rare build around that if you get it, cool. This this you should build around this. Whenever you cast your first spell, draw a card. Um, it's not super under costed for its for the rate, and there's a lot of triggers for it. So if you get this, this is like the the two spell deck in Eldraine, right? If you got the rare, you could build around it. This is the card I build around. For each spell and ability your opponent's control, counter it unless his controller pays four. Okay. For each spell and ability. So at least it's four or three mana counter target spell unless his controller pays four. And then it might just be straight. I think this card's decent. I think it's actually a little bit better than decent. It's a good it's it's almost three mana cancel, basically. Four is a lot. Four is a lot. I'm gonna get god by this this card so much. Windows of Tomorrow's five mana, three four flyer with active ability. Great card. Very good common. Um, I don't know if it's I don't think it's the best blue common, but I think it's the fact it has four toughness on a flyer, three power. Love this card. And it has a mana sink. Very good. Okay. Man. Making me making me work and talk today. Now we're on to the best color though. So this will be nice. This will be easy to uh, to say, this card's great, this card's great, this card's great. It's gonna happen. Okay. Um, let's go. So Agonize Remorse, it's fine, right? The, the fact that it's two mana that you I, I love this card out of the sideboard, right? Out of the sideboard, it can be really quite good. And gain rid of the ability to incidentally target an escape card is, is great. Um, so I would play it. If there's like a bomb rare, you know, you need to play around. It might be playable and just sealed straight up. Uh, Ephemia, the Cacophony, very good. Two mana, two one flyer, cool. I've always liked my welcome turn. And then at the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment. And if you do, you get a zombie. Quite good. Very good card. Powerful rare. Aspect of Lamprey. So it's a four mana discard two. An enchanted creature has lifelink. Um, gets countered by removal. I think it's okay. It's fine. 
depending on how slow the format is, which I think the format's going to be decently slow, this effect could be decent. Giving creature lifelink is fine, but not increasing its power is solid. The Katoblipas! Katoblipas. Um, so it's a 6 mana 3 2 that a creature gets at least minus 2, minus 2. Quite good. Very, much better in sealed than in draft, because in draft you can't play all the sixes, but in sealed, out of slam is fine. So, cling to dust says one mana, either gain three life or draw a card. So, the first instant of it, pretty decent, right? You just exile a card from a graveyard that. I think there's plenty of ways to get there. And it just randomly can hit escape costs. I think this card's like almost main deckable. I think it's main deckable. Uh, Discordant Piper is the build around common, or the necessary common for the sack deck. Because it's two creatures for two mana, effective rate, so it trades with all the other two drops. Um, definitely a card that. You should play if you're in the black red sack deck. Best uncommon of the set, drag to the underworld. A. Hey. Yeah, this card's the best uncommon of the set. Straight up. Um, four mana destroy target creature instant speed. Already up there. In fact, you can lower it down to two mana. Insane. Great. Eat to extinction. Funny name. Um, four mana exile creature, great, slam it. Okay, so Elspeth's Nightmare. So three mana, destroy a creature with power two or less. So you're killing a two drop, then you're making them discard, then you exile a graveyard. I think this is borderline side border, but it might be okay. Like three mana, it's not, it's not Reef Soul. Uh, non-creature, non-land card. I think it's okay. It might be playable. I think it's better in sealed, obviously. Uh, Enemy of Enlightenment. So this card's great. So six mana, five five flyer gets minus one minus one for each card in the opponent's hands, but it's six mana, so you're not whoops, so you're not playing that in the early turns. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card. Remember, it's your upkeep, so you do it in your upkeep, and then you draw per turn. So it doesn't cost you the the card. Yeah, this card's great. Excellent finisher. Erebos busted, move on. Erebos is invention, busted, move on. Minus X, minus X. So it's death wind plus gain X life with incidental random powerful effect. Final death, our black removal spell at common. It's quite good. Five mana instant exile target creature. Um, yeah, very strong. The fruit, I don't care. We're not gonna play Fruit Tisserus. You have to be real gutsy to play this. And it has to be like a draft deck where you're super low to the ground aggro. Yeah, no. Uh, Funeral Rites is quite solid, is very solid in sealed. Um, just three mana, draw two, lose two, snap that off. Uh, Gravebreaker Lamia, great. Uh, Grey Merchant. So people like really love Gary. Like they really love Gary. It was only like okay in original Theros for reference. Uh, he's uncommon now, so you can't stack him as easily, which was like the, one of the big upsides. And it's five mana for a two four. The four toughness is fine. Sorry, Gary. You're you're just okay. Grim Physician is so close. Like, there's not a lot of X ones. There's a lot of 2 2. So, this blocks the two power creatures really quite well. And this might be good enough for the sack deck, but that's about it. Uh, Hateful Eidolon. Okay, so this is the same text as we saw in the white card. So, it's a one mana, one two life, like, fine, whatever. Right, but whenever an enchanted creature dies, Draw a card for each aura you control that was attached to it. So, we have to look for the auras that give max. And there's quite a number of them, so I think this card is good. I think you could build around this card too. Okay, so Inevitable End. 
is the abyss you put it on their best creature and it says you lose your best creature or you have to start sacking other things um, the fact is it triggers on their first upkeep too so it's just a matter of it doesn't kill their biggest thing right away right so you need to have a way you might have to like take a few hits or so they you put it on a flyer or whatever like that flyer is still gonna hit you so I, I think this card's like pretty decent I don't think it's insane I think it's good though I need to play with it a little bit uh Lamp Out of Death's Vigil is the one of the premier commons for the black red sack deck sack a creature drain for one man and it blocks so it's a one man I don't like Minions Return. Everybody likes to play this effect. The fact that this one has Flash makes it slightly better. Just slightly. Okay. Um, Meyer Triton, great. Two mana, two, one death touch. Cool. ETB, mill two, gain two. Very good card. Meyer's Grasp is the premier black common. This is our, this is probably the black, best black common. Two mana, minus three, minus three. Hits everything with cmc three or less basically uh cmc four greater is where this breaks down but that's okay you have a five minute removal spell so this card's very good very 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 good obviously okay people keep playing mogus's favor there's not a lot of x ones in this format so it's not gonna do it's not gonna kill things even for one mana so you play it on like an aggro deck i don't know i don't like it i didn't like it before i still don't like it sniper shepherd a a insane four mana four four flyer cool spell rate and then has other text i don't like the exporn marauder um it does trade with all four mana guys that are three fours so keep that in mind over the dead is great this is one mana draw creature very good very good um and then you can also scry two after the fact very strong card uh, target opponent sacks a creature, target player sacks an enchantment. It's not great. This is not a format for edicts, I don't think. Um, there's just a lot of two drops that you're just, and this is just going to be three mana kill a two, two, so often. I don't like it. So, Farika spawns quite good. So, it's a four mana, three, four. Again, that's the rate for four mana. And then, if it escapes... They sack a non-Gorgon creature. So it's just a lot of value. Great card. Super strong. Okay. 5 mana, 5, 4. Creature gets plus 1, plus 1 indestructible. So a free attack. Um, it's fine. I'll, you know, I'll play a copy of my black. It'll be okay. Scavenging Harpy. Eh, 3 mana, 2, 1 flyer. Okay, so it's below rate for a lot of the flyers. It exiles a card from a graveyard, so that's not irrelevant. You'll probably play this card. It, you know, it's a flyer. It's a flyer that's like not terribly below rate. Soul Reaper Mogus, one of the premier commons for the Black Red Sack deck, because it sack three mana draw a card and sack creature is not the worst. Uh, Temple Thief is quite bad. This is this is not a two mana creature you want to play. So Treacherous Blessing is a card that if you can, so it belongs to the Black Red Sack deck. Because they all say sack a creature. This is sack a creature, which is the one sack a creature enchantment. This is also sack a creature. I guess there's not a. I thought it was sack enchantments. Okay, this might be less good. Um, I think three mana draw three is really strong, and then you need to be able to deal with it, which there might be ways. Um. I think this is this could this card is actually pretty decent. You just have to build around it a little bit. Timurit calls the dead is quite good. You get two two twos and then gain X life scry X. Solid. Timurit, also very good. So at worst it's a two mana two two. And then the activated ability of exile two cards from graveyards gain one life for each creature card. Very good. This card is very strong. Underworld Charger is very good. So it's a three mana three three that can't block. But you get free attacks with it, and then you make it a 5-5, five five, which is just absurdly above rate. There's not a lot of 5-5s five in this format. You'll find that this this very good common. 
I don't like Underworld Dreams, so I'm not going to play it. And then the next two cards are just great. So 4 mana, 3-3 three, three Death Touch. Cool. It'll trade for all the 4 power creatures, or 4 CMC creatures. And then you mill 3, which eh, you should have Escape Synergy here. And Woe Strider is just great. 3 mana, 3-2, three, makes a goat, sack a creature to scry, and you can keep escaping, which doesn't make it even more. <sighs> I think black is currently the best color right now. Two premier common removal spells. Lots of good uncommons. Love it in sealed. You're going to see a lot of black in sealed. Okay. So, the Akroan War is great in limited. So you mind control for a few turns. Creatures must attack you for a turn, so you can set up profitable locks. And then each tapped creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. So good. Super, super, super good. Uh, Anax is very good, so it's at worst, a 3-mana 2-3, so right at where we expect our 3-mana creatures to be, so you get plus 1, plus 1, cool, or plus 1, plus 1. And whenever it or another non-token creature control dies, you get a 1-1, one, one, and if it had power 4 or greater, crazy. This card is super good. Super good. Uh, Arena Trickster, below rate for a 4-mana 3-3. Three, three. That can become a 4-4 four, four if it's your first spell. This is not the, the card you want to play for the, for the flash deck. Aspect of Manticore is a pretty bad combat trick. Yes, three mana, plus two plus zero, oh, first strike. That turn is good. And then just plus two plus zero oh is not enough. I don't think. I think you'll you'll play this card. You'll be okay. Blood Aspirant is very good for the black red sack deck because it can also sack enchantments. Deals one damage to a creature. There's not a lot of two one or X ones, so you're not killing a lot of things. But this thing can get incidentally quite big. So I like it. Kara Celebrant's just great. Two mana, two one. That shocks something. Very good. There's a lot of... It'll trade for two drop and threaten another two drop. Or just be a, a good attack in a lot of ways. So, I don't like Dream Shaper Summon. Six mana, five four. At the beginning of your end step, two and a red sack a non-land. If it was sack a permanent, I would like this a lot more. If you do reveal cards, to reveal a non-land permanent and then put it on the battlefield. So you're swapping permanents, which this does, you know, cycle through your deck pretty quick. But it's, it's only fine. It's, it's probably better in sealed, but I don't, I don't like it in draft. Dreamstalker Manticore is very good for the flash deck. Three mana, four twos already. It trades with all the four power creatures, which is great. And then if you get to trigger it, one, dam one damage isn't spectacular, mind you, but it's a nice aggressive creature. Escape Velocity is going to be a card I'm going to lose a lot to. Just plus one plus zero in haste for, for red the first time, and then for escape, two cards. It's going to get me. Mark my words. Fateful End, very good. Just slam it. Removal spell. Final Flare might be the best red common. Right, we've seen, we've seen the sort of sack, you know, in, in War of the Spark, there was Saka, Creature, or Planeswalker, and deal damage. This is the same thing. Like, three mana, deal five damage to a creature. It's going to be quite good. And it's another sack card for the Black Red Sack deck, which I like. So four mana, four, four reach. So above rate with regards to its power. And it has reach. But when two or more creatures attack, it can't block. So they'll never attack itself. Or they'll never attack with one creature because you can just block. It's a trigger that you can't kill. Like, they, they can't attack with two creatures and you kill one because the trigger would have already happened. Eh, I don't like it that much. It's an attacking creature. Fierce Rise is one of those build around red, red enchantments that I'm tempted to play, but I don't imagine it'll be spectacular. Uh, I don't like Hero of the Games under under rate still will trade with every 2-2 two, two. heroes of the revel is quite good five mana four four so that hits the four the four power mark and it gets you a one one and also has the heroic spell so i like heroes of the revel good card 
I don't imagine I'll be playing a lot of Impending Doom. Plus two, plus three, and attack each combat is not bad, but it's just, it's not great. Incendiary Oracle, there's your red bear. You play it, and you can exile stuff and stuff, whatever. Um, Infuriate, good combat trick. It's almost giant growth. So close to just being straight up giant growth. It doesn't say attacking creature, target creature, plus three, plus two. Very effective combat trick. Uh, Iros's blessing is great. So essentially, if they're right, if they if they're tapped out, sure, um, you get four mana, four damage. So we've seen Goblin Barrage and Dominaria, pretty decent. Like four 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 mana, four damage is quite solid. It does have the marginal downside that you can always, you know, get blown out by a removal spell. So you have to play around the blue one summon that supposedly, I don't imagine that's gonna see a lot of play. Depends how many how people how determined people are to stop auras. Uh, the five mana, like I wouldn't play this into five open mana if there was black. Just just saying. Um, but it seems like it's a decent enough thing. And then the incidental plus one plus one after the fact is not irrelevant. So I think this card is a decent common. I don't think it's the best common. Irreverent Revelers. So, three mana. Destroying the artifact isn't great. There's not a lot of artifacts in the set. And then gaining haste isn't great because there's a lot of three mana two threes. You may play it in an aggro deck, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect it to see a lot of play. Five mana, seven three. We'll trade with every four drop in the format. Do not play. Omen of the Forge. There's our best, I think our best red common. So shock kills basically all the all the two drops. It kills all the one drops. And then once you get beyond three, it's not great. So the three so the cutoff values right that we've seen are two mana two twos, three mana two threes, four mana three fours on the ground. Um there's a few X2 flyers. There's a lot of X3 flyers. So it doesn't kill as many things as you would think. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Um, so this isn't like, shock isn't, this is not a format designed for shock, right? It'll kill a lot of X2s, but it has flash. So it's good for the blue red flash deck and the ability to scry two spines. So I, I think this card is like, maybe it's not as good. Maybe it might not be the best red common. We need to, we need to, Play it out. Um, Oriada Mountains Blaze, fine. It blocks all the two drops. Like two mana. So this is this feels like a Dominaria set where two mana one threes are are excellent blockers because it blocks all the two drops and all the three drops, which means if you have something with that, if you have a three mana three three, you're very happy, which is why you want to look for three mana three threes. And then we get outscaled by the four mana three fours. So I guess the magic, the quote unquote, true magic number is. Four five. If you get four five or better, you're in excellent shape. Even four four is quite good. Um, Ox is so good. Um, it's it's insane and constructed, but well, that's not what I'm going for here. So a five mana four two. Below rate, discard your hand and draw three cards. So it's a pseudo. Like if you play this card, you're probably discarding a card and then drawing three. So it's almost draw two, and then you get it for red red as a five three. That's great. That's where it comes. Eight cards is a lot, but I imagine you, you'll be able to escape it once and that'll be good enough because the draw three in that effect is so good. Phoenix of Ash, a super good, super, super, super strong uh, card just jamming all your red decks. Easy peasy. Okay, I'm going to go on a rant on Portent of Betrayal. People played it a bunch of original Theros. It wasn't great. It, it's a four mana act of treason. The scry one at the end is not good enough. The reason this card is in the set is because there's a black red sack deck. And if this was Act of Treason, I'd be so much happier. Ugh. Cause if it was Act of Treason, you'd be able to set up some pretty nice steal your guy sack thing. So this is gonna see play in the black red at, in the black red sack deck, but it's just bad if you're not in that deck and people are gonna play. Ugh. Okay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Perforos. Just, yeah. 
I'm not a huge fan of Perforos in Limited. Yes, you could get the devotion there, and then it's just great, right? Like, I, I, I think you're almost priced into playing all the gods. Um, but this is, a f like, five mana creatures you control at haste. It doesn't include Perforos himself, too. So I think this is, like, the worst of the gods for Limited. But still probably playable. <laughs> the, the sneak attack effect is three mana is a lot. You still have to sacrifice it, and it's only red creatures, not any other creatures. So definitely the worst of the gods. I would probably think it's not playable. It's, it's real borderline. Poor Frozen Intervention, A+. It's either a fireball on a token, or it just double blazes a creature. Premier card. Um... Satyr's Cunning, so people, so the 1-1 the one -one red satyrs, you should read Black Red Sack deck, uh, because a 1-1 one -one just does nothing in this format. This is a card that is really cool, like, 1 mana, 1-1 one -one is fine. Then you pay 3 mana and exile 2 cards, so the 2 card cost is quite low. But it's so hard to be able to like build around this and it's sorcery speed. I think it's just not good enough, even for the Black Red Sack deck. Okay, so people, so the Maze Warden is 4 mana 3 4, so exactly where all the other 4 mana creatures are. Uh, the 1 mana to swap to a 4 3 means it can trade, cool. And then whenever another creature becomes the target of an ability of a land you control named Labyrinth, you may have it fight that creature. So, for reference, I'm going to go, the land is really, really expensive. Where are you hiding? There it is. So it's four tap, remove an attacking or blocking creature from combat. And it's a rare. Like, it's not even a common, right? So, if you get the rare, and you get this on, like, if you get the rare, I think you get to draft this on common for free. And you're, like, super stoked. Because, so, I mean, five mana fight? It does win basically all the fights, but it's a limited fight that you can only cast it when it's attacking or blocking. I mean, I think this card's good. Like, I think I'll play this card in basically all my red decks automatically. And then it has this incidental other text that I think we shouldn't be focusing on. I think a 4 mana 3 4 is on rate for this format, and it can trade up, which I think is good enough. And then if you have the rare, cool, extra. You know, gravy, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So, 5 mana, 4, 5. So, this is above the 4, 4 rate that we need. You get sack a creature and enchantment. It gets plus 1, plus 0, and menace. I think it's fine. It'll, it'll be a top of the curve card. You'll play one copy and it'll be fine. Stampede Rider. So, 3 mana, 2, 3. Exactly on rate for this set. So, keep in mind, right? 2 mana, 2, 2. 3 mana, 2, 3. 4 mana, 3, 4. And then once you get beyond that, they're all just huge. They're big, dumb idiots. Um, it's hard to get a creature with power 4 or greater. You really have to be exclu almost exclusively green red. So this is like a green red card. But it doesn't even get a counter. It just gets plus 1, plus 1. And you know what plus 1, plus 1 on a 2, 3 is? 3, 4. And you know what 4 mana creatures are? 3, 4s. I'm calling you right now. Stat analysis. This card's not good. This is why I like to go through all of the, the power toughnesses of all the creatures in the sets. It lets you know just on stat. I, like, I knew back in original Theros, Nessie and Asp, premier common. Because 4-5 was huge in that format. <laughs> I miss you, Asp. Okay. So, 3 mana, 3-2 three, haste. Gets trades with everything. Return aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached, but then you exile the auras. Eh. So, white has two white white disroyal creatures, and red has two red red, four damage to each creature in each planeswalker. So this is functionally destroy all creatures with CMC four or, four or less, uh, because the all the creatures that are like two, like, if it's a two five, the only thing this does this once again this doesn't kill. I think my favorite card in the set. I think my favorite card in the head. This is stupid, stupid. Two, where are you hiding, crab, turtle? 
Turtle, turtle, where are you? Riptide turtle. Two mana, oh, 05. I'm calling it. This card is impossible to push through. It's, it blanks a creature, like, all the way until turn six. Ugh. Oh. Anyway, I, I, I'm just going to rant about how much I love that turtle. <laughs> My dirtily blue control decks. I'm just going to want two copies of turtle and be like, pacifism. Okay, uh, Tectonic Giants is great. So, 4 mana, 3, 4, cool, whatever, but then it has extra taxes. Play this card, you're happy. It's a good rare. Thrill of Possibility is a reprint, I like it. The fact it's an instant, great for the, this is one of the like bread and butter comments for the blue-red flash deck. And we saw that it's decently playable in Eldraine, it's fine. Okay, Triumph of Anax is Plus one, plus oh, and trample. Plus two, plus oh, and trample. Plus three, plus oh, and trample. And then the creature fights. Solid effect if you're a good aggro deck. Otherwise, probably wouldn't play. Uh, Underworld Breach, let's disregard what Legacy and older formats do. So it's a two mana upfront cost to be able to escape things for a turn. Not particularly good. Okay. Underworld Fires, there are not a lot of X ones. So this doesn't kill a lot of things. And it's a sorcery. This card's not good. Okay. Underworld Rage Hound. So two mana, three one. Great. Pushes through all of the two drops and the three drops. It attacks each combat at Babel. Cool, it's gonna go through it, and then it'll be blanked on turn four. But then it escapes and becomes a four two for four. Why is Underworld Fires an uncommon? Because they don't want the exile effect at common um, because they want escape to be a decent mechanic. The thing is, right, so you can bring this in exclusively against like the white-red token deck where it all doesn't make X1s, right? But the fact is, it's just an uncommon because they don't want the exile effect at common. They don't want the ping everything effect at common. Because if this was that common, you could play two of them the same turn, and then that would be really powerful. Um, so that's why that's an uncommon. Uh, so Rage Hound is actually quite quite a good common. Um, because it'll, you play it on turn two, you attack, you'll, you'll basically trade for the first, for anything in terms of turn two or turn three, and people will probably be okay with it. And then the late turn, late game, so two, as a 4 mana 4 to, but not costing you a card, just things from your graveyard, it's pretty decent. Wrap and Flames is, if you are the red aggro deck, you want exclusively one copy of this in your deck. Um, because it's your it's your falter effect. This is the, this will be the card that wins you the most games the turn that you cast it. Because you cast it and then you'll attack them for 8 or whatever. Because it's just like, duk, 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 can't block, okay, great, smash. So if you're in the aggro deck, you probably want one copy of this to like be able to clear the way at the end. But don't play, don't play more than more than one, I don't think. So red is a decent color. Um, feels like a support color in this format, which is kind of interesting for red. Now on to green. Green has good cards. I think black is a very powerful color in this format, and I think green is right up there. I think black green is, I don't necessarily call it the best color pair, but I think they're the two best base colors to be in. Okay. Uh, spider, great rare, move on. So four mana, three, five with reach. So we played five mana for three fives with reach in the past at common, and then this hill says, oh, instead of sorcery, get a free one, two. Just above rate, great card. Uh, Binding of the Titans, okay, so. Each player mills three, whatever. Exile two cards, and so it's like, exile two cards, gain two life dish, and then regrowth. Very slow, very, very, very slow. One of the things about regrowth is you get to like buy something back and cast it that turn. Um, I think this is card may be okay in sealed. I don't like it in draft. I think just wasting a, an early turn on this isn't great, and wasting a later turn on this means the game's already pretty slow. I love this spider. 
So, okay. When he comes into play as a 1-2 with Reach, it's not good. It doesn't kill any flyer. All the flyers in this format are 2-2s two or 2-3s two or 3-4s, three right? So when you play it, it's fine. It doesn't do anything great. But then if you ever escape it, you're super happy. Because then you get the 5 mana, 3-4 with Reach that essentially eats a flyer. So, good card. Ignore the first, you're essentially playing it as a, as a one turn block a four power creature and chump with it and then you get it back. So as someone who plays SDDH, I'm so happy Destiny Spinner exists otherwise. So, okay, two mana, two, three, above ranked. It's essentially a three mana creature in this format. And your creatures can't be countered. Incidental text might prove relevant. There's a few counter spells. And a land you control gets plus like becomes an XX elemental, where X is the number of enchantments you control. It's a mana sink. This card's it's not bananas in the sense that it'll be like absurd or anything. It's just like a lot of value, staple on a card. If you are in green, you should just play this and be happy. Okay. So Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Three mana, two, four. Cool. Above rate. Four toughness. Big. Blocks all the... Th two drops, three drops, and four drops. And you can play an additional land. Cool. And lands are every basic type. Oh, okay, cool. If you're in green, you play this card. Move on. Happy. Okay. Now I need to see. The first I row in games. So, three mana, make a one one. That sucks. Then put three counters. That's good. Then if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw two. That's also good. Well, let's pay attention to, remember, green red is the power four or greater deck, but the fact that this puts three counters means you can get in it, you like build up an incidental creature too, and then create a gold and blah, blah. So you're basically trying to draw two cards in three turns, two turns essentially, right? It's not unreasonable. I think this card's decent. I would probably play this card. I think it's okay. It's not a huge splashy effect, but it doesn't need to be. It's just efficient. The, the the way that this builds up the ki the token's almost not worth a mana the three counters is worth like two one or two one and a half mana probably and then if so it's all about triggering number three if you can trigger number three consistently this is a slow divination with some upside okay oh giant growth how far you've fallen uh this is the combat what is a gold token a gold token is a is a token as an artifact that tap sack make one mana of any color or add one mana of any color to your mana pool so it's essentially a, a lotus petal right if you're familiar with with that card so it's an artifact that tap sack add a mana so it's a very slow like but if you play this on turn three right you get the token on turn six so it may let you cast like a three drop and a four drop the same turn but otherwise there's not a lot of mana sinks for the token regardless hope that helps okay um gift of strength this is the combat trick you need to play around if you're playing against a green player with two open mana it's no giant growth gaining reach is going to be non is going to be a non-factor a lot of the time there's not a lot of flyers in this format but it's a good way to deal with it okay oh so people are going to play a lot of hydra's growth right so it's a three mana Put a counter, and if you have your upkeep, double counters. And all this screams to me is, hey, you should two for one me. Please play your removal spell on this creature. If they don't have an answer, this card will win the game very fast. Nope, it does not give trample. Eh. I guess this is as much as I can say. Like, I, I think there will be games where you're like, oh, I just Hydra's Growth, my, my two drop. I went two drop Hydra's Growth and then just won the game. And then there'll be times where I went two drop and I went to play a Hydra's Growth. They killed my guy. I got two for one and then I just lost. I think that second scenario is more common. Okay, so this card is subtle, right? Hyrax Tower Scout is a three mana, three, three. Ding, 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 ding. It's above rate. It's better than three mana two threes. So probably play this a lot. This is gonna be an undervalued common. And when it enters the battlefield, untap a creature. Super small effect, efficient at rate. 
This is your filler three drop that you should keep in mind. Uh, Carrie did quite good. Add a mana of any color, and if you have a creature with power four greater, up two mana. Solid. Solid card, great two drop. Basically, you, you play one or two copies no matter what, and it helps splash if you want to splash. Uh, do not play Inspire Awe. It's a four mana fog that scries to. Ugh. Ugh. Just don't play it. Yes, there are scenarios where you can warp it, so you are the only one playing enchanted and enchantment creatures that you can get on. It's not worth four mana. It's not worth a slot in your deck. Close the uh, design. So six mana, creatures get plus X plus X, where X is your devotion green. Okay, it's like an overrun. It can be okay. Overrun with no trample. It's not unreasonable. I, if you're if you're a base green deck, you probably are okay playing one copy of this. Yeah. Okay. Loathsome Kaimei. So three mana, four one. So very few X ones in this format. This is one of them. So this trades with everything, but it also trades for four drops. Probably what happens is you play it, you attack, you trade for their their um, you trade for their two mana two two. And then you get it back and it's a 5-2 and then it trades with their 2-2 two -two again. This card's a good blocker. That's what this is. This says, I will block all your creatures. And there's not a lot of X1s or things that deal with X1s. Like, this is, again, there's very few of them. So that's fine. I think, I think this card is like a playable 3 drop and you're okay. Mantle of the Wolf is so good. Okay. So all you need to do is make sure that this resolves and you're just so far ahead so four mana plus four plus four enchantment is solid but then if it ever is put into a graveyard you get two two twos so all you have to do is make sure that they don't kill it with the spell on the stack i think that's good enough for me people you want this is a it feels like a curve out format with some haymakers and this is a, a card that you'll be able to resolve it a lot and just get them so solid ramp uh moss viper you know, fantastic. One mana, one one death punch. One of the very few, very few X ones. They had a scorpion in the path, now we have a snack, but this is a great snack. One mana, one one death punch is just super efficient in this format. Like it a lot. Mystic Repeal is a sideboard card. Uh, I know, how's my girlfriend doing? Uh, you can ask, uh, she's actually my fiance. We are, we are happily engaged, and we're doing great. She's fantastic. Thanks for asking. So I talked about how much I liked Revoke Existence, and this is a card that is, if I said Re Revoke Existence was main de was almost main deckable, I'm pretty sure Mystic Re Repeal is also almost main deckable. It's like so close. I think it's main deckable and sealed. You want one of these effects in sealed, but we're gonna see one at common that'll do the same thing. It does hit the indestructible gods, so in post board, this comes in against gods, obviously, if you're in green. Otherwise, like, it's so close. I think I want one of these effects in every sealed deck, and then in draft, I'm not sure. Uh, we got a big piggy. Five mana, 10, six, that all creatures able to block do so. But when it becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draws a card. So if I, yeah, this essentially gets rid of an enchantment for one for green mana at instant speed. So it's it is an effective effective card. That's why I like it. We'll see that there's one at common that does the same thing. So even if you don't see this card, there's there's a there's multiple of these effects. There's forty. I think you missed the beginning. There's forty two uh, enchantment creatures in this set, and approximately eighty total enchantments. So almost. Uh, a third of the set is enchantment. So it's really close, number-wise, to being what Mirrodin was. In Mirrodin, you'd main deck shatter. But that was at, like, 38%. So it's really close. That's why I say it's on the borderline. I think the board is solid. I think it just kills a bunch of creatures. And then, yeah, they draw four cards or whatever. So it might be okay. They, you swap their creatures on the board for new cards in their hand. Uh, Horn Beetle, so here's our two mana, another two mana two two. That if you control a creature with power four or greater, which this Chimera exists for a reason, uh, you put a counter on it. But this is another creature, right? If it, I, I just wish this 
worked on itself. I think that would be too good. I think if you get one counter on it, it's solid. And if you get two counters on it, you're great, which is why this is that uncommon. I think it's it's actually quite good. It's, it's the two drop of choice if you're in that deck. Uh, Nessian Wanderer, so Constellation, look at the top three cards and put a land in your hand. So it's a two mana one three. I had two mana one three to block all the two drops and a good chunk of the three drops, so solid card. Three mana one four. So this so three mana one four reach. This this body looks very innocuous. It's good. It blocks everything up until CMC four basically. And then it's an life gain's not the worst. So this card's okay. It's playable. Bills, if, if you need a 3-drop, this is not a bad one. Uh, Nylia's Bonkers. Let's move on. <laughs> like, it's just so good. Okay. Basically, yeah. The gods aren't as stupid broken, but they're still stupid. For most of them. So, 5 mana, 5-3. Five, three. That 3 toughness is bad. It gets blocked by all the 4-drops. So, this tagline isn't fantastic. You'll, you'll play this if you need a 5 drop, but it's not a great one. Uh, Nylia's Huntmaster, so 4 mana, 4, 3. So it also trades with 4 drops, which is fine. right? But a creature game plus X plus O means you can attack 1. Eh, it's fine. It's fine. Again, another playable. It's, it's playable. It's not great. It does have 4 power, which is important to keep in mind. That's why they made this a 4, 3 instead of a 3, 4. Um, Nylia's Intervention is probably the worst of the interventions in terms of limited. Because just searching for lands isn't that great, and dealing damage to each creature with flying isn't that great. Side sideboard at best. This card's good. So Nyx Herald's a three mana two three, so on rate. But then at the beginning of combat, an enchanted or enchantment creature gets plus one plus one and trample. So it attacks as a three four. Okay, that's you know that's pretty tight. But then any other enchant this card's good, very good. This is a, a, a premier three drop. It's just a lot of. There's a lot of good cards in the set for limited. Oh my god. Okay. Nyx Bloom Ancient. Eh, that's that's jettison that off to EDH, right? So is seven mana, five five trample that do you have a mana sink? If so, congratulations. But I don't think that this card is particularly good for limited. Or see. There's not a lot of sinks in this format. Nyxborn Colossus is a great way to get this like this big boy. So six mana, six seven. I think I want one copy of this in all of my green decks. Which is crazy. It's just so vanilla. But it's just huge. Maybe not all of my green decks. I think in like two thirds of my green decks, I want exclusively one copy. So, Omen of the Hunt. So it's three as an instant speed rampant growth. Not unreasonable. I think it's fine. It's okay. Uh, Fairy's Band Trawler, very good. So it's a 6 mana 4 4, so under costed, but when it enters the battlefield, it fights a creature you don't control. It has 4 power, it has 4 toughness. It kills a lot of things, actually, so effective. Good card. Plummet, sideboard, obvious. Oh my god, okay, Relentless Pursuit. This card is bonkers. So it's 3 mana, reveal the top 4 cards. Put a creature and or land into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Have you heard of this card called Divination? When you play Divination on turn three, the point is to get at least one other land and some action. Oh, look, that's what this does. Except you look at four cards and you pick the best. Card is real good. So think of it, this, if this card was Divination in green, you'd play it. And this is almost better yeah <laughs> it's this card is good <laughs> this card is quite good and yes as as was stated in in chat in green black it's very very good because you can set up your escape cards so man green, green i said green and black are the two best colors in this format for a reason uh renata very good so four mana three toughness so under underrate there for a 4 mana 2 3 but it has the most powerful effect which is each other creature enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter great card better in sealed than in draft but great card all around okay here's our common 
destroy an artifact, destroy an enchantment, exile a card. I think if Revoke Existence is borderline playable, this is probably playable. Um, I think you can have in sealed one main die copy of this is glorious, and I think you'll always want one main die. I wouldn't play two. I think one is the number for sealed. I think it's like zero point seven in draft. So I don't know. I don't. Th I think it's just like almost not good enough for draft for best of three draft. Best of one draft, I'd probably play that card if you're arena players. Uh, Satessin Champion, great rare, just snap it up and you're happy. Satessin Partitioner, Petitioner. so 3 mana 2-2, two, two, underrate, and do I feel gain life equal to your devotion to green? So what made the gain life card better in original Theros was that it was a 4 mana 2-4, two, four, and that 4 toughness was huge, because you'd play it, it'd be a blocker and gain you life. The fact that this is a 2-2 two, two is much worse. Much, much, much worse. So don't play this card if you had fond recollections of original Theros. It's a fine two drop, but it gains you two to four life and you're okay. Uh, I would almost never play Satesha and Skirmisher. Two mana, two one. That constellation gets plus one, plus one. Still trades for all the two drops. Uh, so the thing is, right, uh, the incidental life gain can be helpful for devotion, specifically for green devotion. But you also want the rel like that's what made it good in Theros. It was a relevant body plus incidental life gain. And that's what made it good. Because in that format, four toughness was the magic number. Like everything had three power. So two four blocked everything. Okay, so it's the test and tracing is one and a green draw card. Okay, that's a rate, and then plus one plus one trample. Fine. I I'm not a fan of it. I probably wouldn't. But it's fine. Uh, Skola Grove Dancer. Here's another two mana two two. Reiterating this, if I sound like a broken record, I apologize. And when a land is put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain a life and then mill one. Fine. I not a fan. Like you play it if you need the two drop. Oh my God, the Snack Beast. It's back. It's a four mana four four, which means it's above rate. Yes. And then it becomes a seven mana seven seven. Yes! This is the Nessian Asp of the set. Praise be, play this card. It's above rate. It beats everything CMC four or less. It has four power, so it triggers all of that. And it becomes a seven seven, which is ginormous in this format. Probably the best green card. It's close, it's very close. This, this card, I, I would just, Slam it. I remember when four mana four fours were were special. <sighs> this card's really good <laughs> for a common. Um, War by the the blessed. So it's two mana. Enchanted creature fights and gets plus zero plus two. The thing is, right? There's so many three. Green green has a lot of four power creatures, which is the magic number. So this. This could be playable. I don't think it's great because if it was because it's plus O plus two, so it only can win a fight with things that it could attack and trade at least, right? So the fact that green has a lot of four power creatures means that this is better than it looks, but I don't think it's great. And then Wolf Willow Haven, excellent ramp card. Uh, one in a green. The fact it's only two mana. It makes a land, and then you can just incidentally make a 2-2. It's the same. It's fine. Oh, you know, you play this card. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of sinks in this format, so getting the extra mana isn't huge, huge. Okay, now on to multicolored. So, Acolyte of Affliction, good card. Um, it's four mana, two, three, so behind rate in terms of stats, but it draws you a card. You mill two and then return a permanent from your graveyard to your hand. If you're in green black, you want this sort of to help escape, it's fine. You know, it, you'll play this if you're in green black, but I wouldn't like first pick it and force it for that reason. Um, this is five mana, reveal six cards, opponent exiles a non-land, you put the rest into your hand, and then the, so your opponent gets 
your best card, and you get the five other cards. That is interesting. I don't know what to say about this card. I, I have to. I just have to play with this one to be completely honest. Uh, Ashley Ox busted. Move on. <laughs> uh, Atris Oracle of Half Truths. So four mana, three two menace. Okay. When enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face down pile and a face up pile. I love this design. Okay, so it's a four mana three two that draws you at least one card. Could draw you two cards. Yeah. I think this is decent. I'm not gonna attack with it very often, but a four mana three two draw a card menace? Pretty reasonable. Uh Lion is so good. So two mana three three above rate. Kane's indestructible. Great. When it dies, it becomes an enchantment that can also make the creature indestructible. Also great. Solid, solid rare. Uh, so I'm working on a cosplay of Calyx Destiny's hand. Fingers crossed I actually, you know, get around to finishing it. Um I think so it's not superb. Like, the other two Planeswalkers are obviously better. Uh, four mana, draw an enchantment. Cool. Exile a creature enchantment you don't control until an enchantment you control leaves the battlefield. So it turns something into an O-ring. That's not unreasonable. And return all enchantments from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's fine. I mean, it's not, it's not great in terms of limited, but I love, I love the design. Just saying. Okay. Uh, Dalekos Craft. So three mana, two, four. Above rate. Add mana for artifacts. There's no artifacts. Equipped creatures have flying and... Okay, pass. This is a 3 mana 2-4 with text that's almost certainly not relevant. Don't bend over backwards to make this card better. Devour of Memory. So 2 mana 2-1. Two, Whenever one or more cards, it gets plus 1, plus 1 and can't be blocked. And no, this card is... Below, below, app, below rate. Too much, too much work for it. It's a lot of work. Dream Trawler's busted. Just busted. Six mana, three five, flying lifelink. Whenever you draw a card, it gets plus one plus zero. Oh. And whenever it attacks, draw a card. And you can discard a card. Yeah, this card's busted. It's like Prognostic Sphinx all over again. Which had the same sort of effect of discard a card and gains hexproof, so you just can never kill it. And it has lifelink. Okay. Enigmatic incarnations. Beginning of your end step, you may sack another enchantment if you do search your library for a creature. That's cute. I don't think it's good. I think it's cute. It can be broken and constructed. This card's so good. It's 3 mana 2-2, two, two, but Constellation puts a counter and gains flying. Super strong. Very, very, very good. Uh, this is uh, Tappy Toe Claws, basically. So 2 mana 2-2, two, two, haste. Other satyrs have plus 1, plus 1 in haste. Whenever you attack with 3 or more creatures, discard a card at random if you do draw 2 cards. It's fine. You'll, you'll, you'll suicide with this a lot, basically. This card is bananas. So, white, white, red, red, 6 1. Attacks each combat of Fable. Enters the battlefield, choose 2, 3, or 4 at random. And has protection from CMC other than the chosen color. Or chosen number. So, yeah, this card's bananas. Can't be hit by a good chunk of removal. It just smashes face. The card is really good. Really good. There will be times where it like feels super underwhelming because you're like, Play my four mana six one. Oh, it doesn't have protection from two. Well, he must attack. Oh, you lost with your cube drop. It's just so strong. Holy cow. Yeah. Achilles Achilles reborn. Great. Hero of the Next Born. Three mana two two. Makes a one one with heroic. So this is like the premier card if you are the white red go wide deck. There's not a lot. There's not a lot there, though. There's very few things that piece together. I think in in the right configuration. So I think that's one of the weaker archetypes. It's better in draft. Don't try and do it in sealed, unless you get the, of course, the, the nuts pool. Uh, God 
is super this god is really good so three mana four five exile a card from a graveyard if it's a land add mana otherwise gain two life and deal two damage super powerful and it's only three mana oh the first of the titans yay okay so black red etb sacrifice it unless it escaped enters the battlefield or attacks you discard a card yeah so this card's just great it's just impossible to deal with super good and 6-6 six, six is just ginormous. Uh, doggo. This good doggo. 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three lifelink. Ahead of, ahead of rate. As menace. It also has vigilance. And you stop escape. Solid. This is one of the better cards for the blue-red deck. Because it's 2-mana, two 2-2 two, two flyer. M more than the additional text. Where it deals 1 damage to an opponent. Scribe 1. Uh, I don't need to talk about Pelucranos. That's busted. Okay, Rise to Glory. Return a creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield or return an aura card. So, for five mana, Rise from the Grave uh, on your graveyard isn't necessarily enough. Um, Rise to Glory combos really well with the white pacifism enchantment because it also, you can sacrifice the enchantment to exile the underlying creature which lets you get a pass for them back i think that's the important like you need to have multiple of that card because it's hard to get auras into the grave okay three mana two two etb look at seven cards reveal an aura put it in your hand put the rest on the bottom whenever an aura becomes attached to make more uh, this is a lot of value a lot of value here it's fine you need to have enough auras obviously It doesn't work with the pass. Okay. Uh, build around uncommon for the black red sack deck. Card's really good. Staggering insight is a card that people are undervaluing. So, um, blue white, plus one plus one, lifelink, and uh, curious obsession text. Very good. Um, slap this on a lot on a lot of creatures. This card, this card is very good. Very very good. I like it a lot. This Titan's busted. Move on. It's not have to be much more than that. And then this is a three mana four four. Ooh, look, green red, four power effects. Oh, look, four power. It has trample and can't attack unless you control another creature with power four or greater. Yep, very good card. And now onto our effects. Altar is good in sealed. I'd play this card in sealed um, because of so it taps for one mana of any color. And then Pristine Talisman saw plenty of play in Sealed, because it just you can just tap it and start gaining life. And that incidental life gain doesn't seem like a lot. But imagine if you had an enchantment that said, on turn three, you know, at uh, at the at, during your opponent's end step, gain a life. With no other text. You probably wouldn't play that. This also adds mana. So I think it's good. Uh, Bronze Sword is bad. Equip cost three for this effect is almost assuredly not worth it. You will probably see that this is, the, the reason this is equip three is because if we had an equip two here, it'd be too good. Entrancing Liar, three mana. You may choose not to untap. X tap, tap creature with power X or less doesn't untap. Eh, that's a expensive-esque pacifism. I think that's fine. Mirror Shield, cute, flavorful wouldn't play it creep creature it's plus plus two has hex proof this is annoying for reference and whenever a creature with death touch blocks destroy that creature um it reminds me of mask of avacyn which gave plus one plus three in hex proof that card was uh, irritating um, i'm glad it doesn't give more power and more toughness i wouldn't play nyx lotus in limited that much to be honest very slow Four mana, enters tapped, and then you add just a bunch of mana of that color. So it might be okay in like a super green ramp deck, but otherwise probably not. Shadow Spear is insane. This is probably one of the better first picks of the set because you get to play it in every deck. Plus one, plus one, trample, lifelink, and you can make permanents loose, hexproof, and indestructible. So be, yeah, this card is just insane. And equip cost two is very reasonable. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern sideboard material, just of how the text works. So you enter the battlefield, exile the card, but then if you want to exile the graveyard, you need to tap and sack it, and you don't get to draw the card. So 
I wouldn't play the familiar three mana one three flyers under rate. The chariot's quite good as a first strike trample haster for four mana and then a crew of only one. That's the important part. Charlotte's amulet's always an okay playable. Not spectacular, but it's fine. And Wings of Hubris is quite bad. This is a uh, cobbled wings, but worse. So. And then we have lands. Field of Ruin, nice reprint. Probably don't play it. Labyrinth. I think it's slow, but it might be playable. Like, I think it's good and sealed. It's not a huge cost. This is not a mana intensive set, even though Devotion is in play. Temples, you play them. Unknown Shores, almost assuredly, do not play this card. It's not worth the one, the, the extra cost. And then Pretty Lands. We did it! Woo, it only took two hours! Yay! I'm gonna go get lunch now. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. Bye!